changing is basically a guided tour of the best solutions that are out there for addressing the planet's biggest problems. So it's 600 pages of ideas about sustainability, about uh, poverty alleviation, about building democracy and protecting human rights, um, about working to make our cities places that not only respect human needs but natural needs, uh, and in general sort of trying to build a society that allows us to be both green and prosperous, or as we say, bright green. Two years ago, it didn't seem like anybody cared about what we were writing about. I mean, we had a great following, a small following of folks who were really fired up and really enthusiastic about the site. And you know, thousands of people a month would come to the site, but we were not even on the, you know, on the radar as far as the mainstream media goes. And then a year ago, when we decided to write this book, and Abrams gave us this book deal, you know, we thought we were writing a book that was going to be way out on the fringe. You know, yeah. like, hey, we're writing about all these trippy ideas, like you know, cell phones that pop apart when you heat them so that you can recycle the parts, you know? And now suddenly, like, the things we're writing about are in, like, the New York Times and stuff. So it's amazing how quickly public opinion has been moving. It's an amazing team, and we got really, really lucky. Al Gore agreed to write the foreword fairly early in the project. Bruce Sterling, the yeah. noted science fiction author and design guru, wrote the introduction and did an amazing job as well. And then we were really blessed to be able to work with Stefan Zeitmeister, who's, you know, as I say in my thank you to him, he's the best kind of genius. Media in general is so cynical that uh, it tends to approach anybody who has a positive attitude as some idiot. I, I think that cynicism has a really corrosive effect. People realize that we have some major problems that we're facing and, and you can either dwell in them or you can decide that there are solutions and there's the possibility to really empower ourselves. There are millions of people all around the planet connected to each other, working on solutions, inventing new options, innovating against problems. and generally trying to figure out how to what the model is that we should be building. I'm very optimistic. I see the glass half full. Um, world changing definitely is about acknowledging problems, but only insofar as it gets you to talking about the solution. Right now, in this moment, optimism is a political act. There are a lot of people out there who benefit from the status quo, and we know the status quo isn't all that great. So those people who are benefiting from the system are just not upset when you're apathetic or cynical or jaded. They do get a little worried when you start being optimistic and forward-looking and enthusiastic. I'm an incurable optimist. There are people and projects and organizations in places all over the planet doing amazing, positive things, uh, which give me hope for a better future every day. I think that if there's anything in the world that world changing is doing, spreading the idea that there is actually a better future we can build and the solutions are available and there are things that we can do that will lead to a profoundly better future than the one that we're building now and that that moment is here.